Hi guys and welcome to 123 MyT's video on how to build a mining rig on a budget. Alright guys, so previously I did a build for a 6 GPU mining rig and to be honest that turned out to be quite expensive. So if you want to see that video I'll leave a link in the description field below. So I really wanted to do a budget build which is cheaper which means that you know you're going to make more profit but also I wanted to do it to show you guys that it's actually quite cheap to get into mining. Okay, so let's take a look at the parts that we're going to need for our build. So first of all, I've got the Aerocool power supply, that's a 750 power supply, and it's also a platinum power supply, I don't know if you can see the 80 plus platinum down logo down the bottom there, but basically it's going to power the whole rig, and I went a little bit more expensive, you could probably go a lot cheaper, this was about $150, uh, but you could probably go you could probably pick these up cheaper version for maybe like $50 or something like that But I always try and make sure your power supply is a decent one because it's going to be powering your rig 24 7 So you want it to be half decent now on our uh, right hand side here. We've got the uh, Sapphire Radian RX 570 it's the Nitro Plus version and it's also the overclocked version and it's 4 gigs. Now I go for this one because it's great value for money. So you get about 28 to 29 hashes uh, with mods and the cost is about $330 um, Australian. So you could probably pick them up a lot cheaper in the US, both of these components. The next components that we're going to use here are two bits of pine here, really cheap. I found these pretty much in the street and just cut them up to size. These are going to become the rack where we, we sit our cards on top, so I'll show you that a bit later. I've got an old hard drive here, uh, it's a Toshiba hard drive. I'm going to use that one instead of the one that's in there and I'll show you a bit later. So this was, this was one that I had lying around. Um, so we're going to make good use of that. This cable here is a, a dual power supply cable. So what you do is you plug in uh, your power supplies into here and then this end of the cable goes into your motherboard. Not sure whether we have to use that at this stage, but it's good to have one of these around if you're trying to do this build. And on the end here, we've got our riser, which uh, plugs into our graphics card, and that's going to allow us to sit the graphics cards off the board. Now you might have noticed the last part here. Last part is actually the best part. It's going to save us a lot of money. And it's also going to stop this uh, old PC from going into landfill. So this is an ins old uh, Dell Inspiron. And you can see down here the most important part is it's got a Celeron CPU in there. Now this computer when booted up would be really slow these days with Windows 10. And it would be pretty much uh, useless to use in an office setting. However these days this is a mining gold right here because it's got a low draw power CPU and it's also got 4 gigs of RAM which is just perfect for what we need for our budget. Okay guys so the first thing we're going to need to do is strip down our uh, Inspiron machine here. Now I found this, um, someone wanted to throw it out and it's pretty much like grandma's PC. No one really wants it anymore and it's just going to end up going to like landfill so what we're going to do is we're going to give it an extra few years of life and uh, this is going to mine a lot of coins for us so this is what we want. So let's go ahead and pull everything out. We're going to get rid of a lot of stuff like the, the uh, CD-ROM drive at the start here um, and the hard drive and a few other bits and pieces. So we slide the top off. The other thing we want to look for as well is we need these PCIe slots, express slots across here. And these are going to be the slots where we're going to be able to sit our graphics cards. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is pull out this hard drive. If this hard drive is too big and too expensive to run our mining rig 24 hours. So we're going to get rid of this straight away. But if you, if you want to do it cheap, you can keep this in the computer and just reload it with Windows 10 and uh, do it that way. And that will save you a bit of money. Next thing we want to do is just pop the front off the Dell and we're going to push out the CD-ROM drive we no longer need that and it's just going to use up power I've just taken out the SD card reader as well so what we want to do is we want to remove everything out of the rig and try and make this rig as uh, power efficient as possible because we're going to be running it 24-7 it needs we need to think about power efficiency 
as we're building uh, these rigs. All right, so we've got the hard drive out, we've got the CD-ROM drive out. Uh, the next thing to do is take out your um, power supply. Now you can provide power to your mining rig in two ways. You can keep your existing power supply, which will give power to your motherboard, your RAM, uh, and your mining rig. And then you can add in a second power supply, which will then add power or supply power to all of your graphics cards. And you would need this cable for it to work. But I think what we're going to do in this build, I'm actually going to try and get rid of this power supply and I'm going to use the AeroCool power supply that we looked at earlier. Okay guys, so we're just going to remove the power supply. That plug comes out from there and there's another little cable over here which does your CPU power. So that's going to come out as well. So she's all unplugged now and out she comes. So what have we actually done here? Well, we've got ourselves a motherboard, we've got ourselves a case, and we've got ourselves a CPU, and we've got ourselves some RAM, and all this was free. So this was ready to be thrown out and go into landfill. We're going to recycle it, and we're going to turn it into a, a budget mining rig build, which is going to make us a lot of money. Right guys, so this is roughly how she's going to look when she's built. The only issue is I need to try and get clear out some space here for the cabling to come out. And that's the old CD drive. Uh, there you can see it's been pot riveted in so we might be able to just kind of cut out the side somehow and feed the cabling through there that allows us to get access to our cabling on this side to be honest this fitted in really really well um, our graphics card is going to sit on the top and we're going to put a uh, bolt down through here to secure these two beams in place and then actually all our cards will just kind of slot across the top like this Maybe five GPUs on this rig before it gets too cluttered. Maybe three. One, because you need a bit of space between the two. So maybe one, two, and three might be better. So three GPU rig. Let's see if we can get it done. Okay guys, so what I've decided to do is actually remove the motherboard. So I'm just going to take these screws out of the motherboard here and just lift it out. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to have to, at the front of the case here, drill these pot rivets out of their sockets and then that will allow this frame to push, push um, forward and then just hopefully pop out but I don't want to get any of the metal filings um, on the motherboard because that could jeopardize the whole project and uh, to not uh, take five minutes just to take care and remove that so that no metal filings get in there is probably a really silly move so I'm just going to err on the side of caution remove the motherboard and then drill out uh, this uh, CD-ROM stand here. I've just undone all the screws for the motherboard and the motherboard should just pop out quite easily now. Okay, so our case is getting a little bit closer to completion. Okay guys, you can see here I've drilled out the pot rivets and around the back it's got these little feet here you can just push down on either side and then she just pops out, pops out like that and we're good to go on our uh, on, on the extra room for our power supply. Okay, so the motherboard is in now. We've got that in, and we've got the brace or the bar on the back where the back of the graphics card is going to sit. And there wasn't much of a lip to actually attach this to, so I've done a pretty good job, I think, of getting it done. I put a little um, pot rivet, a little L bar on there, just so I had a bit of stability with it. And then just at the other end, just for, as a precaution, I put on a cable tie. So the next step here, I guess, is to drop in uh, your power supply. Now this power supply actually fits in really, really well. As you can see, the power supply fits in really well. Just there, and then very snug on this side. Almost as if it was built for it. It sits in there quite, sits in there quite firm, and there's no extra... Um, tying off really needed. You could probably put a cable tie around it um, but it's uh, it's uh, it's in a pretty good spot. It's not going anywhere fast and it actually really suits the build. It's going to work out really well. Okay so the next step here is to obviously plug these cables back into the motherboard so we'll do that real quick. So I reckon the next step here is to get our hard drive in there. So we get these really long cables so we're going to have to do some cable management at some stage considering that the cable only really needs to go from here to the drive, it's not very far. So we're just going to pop it in like that. 
Now you can secure these drives, but I think it's going to be okay, kind of sitting there. It's not really going to be able to move out of there unless you tip it upside down, so just don't tip it upside down. Plug the SATA drive into the motherboard, and then the other end, this cable here, goes into power supply. Next cable we're going to do is the CPU cable. You can see CPU there, and it's one of these little 4-pin adapters that's going to go into the motherboard. And that comes around and plugs in over here into the CPU socket. Okay, so the next cable we've got here is the motherboard cable. So this goes from your power supply to the motherboard and obviously gives all the motherboard the power that it needs. So we're going to plug that in now. Okay, so we've got our CPU cable in. We've got our PCIe 8-pin, uh, okay, which is going to give us power for our, our graphics card. And we've added in two more SATA. SATA cables which plug into the end of our riser card. Okay so we just take a look back at the front now. We can push this back on the front. We probably don't even really need this there. Um, it doesn't have anything in there. It doesn't really serve any purpose now. You might even want to just leave it off um, for better airflow uh, for the rig. But we'll just leave it on for the time being and see how we go. Alright so we're getting closer to the end now and the next step is to plug in our riser card. So our riser card will go into the primary slot of the motherboard and then our riser card goes on the bottom of the graphics card. Our graphics card is going to sit upside down in this case. And we're going to lock it into place. There's a little lock switch there. Next step is to plug in our 8 pin cable into the graphics card so that it will have power when it starts up. Very important. So that's in now and then we'll need to plug in the SATA cable to the bottom of the riser card. Now you can go ahead and do your cable management and just tidy everything up. Okay, next step here is to plug in your power into the rig and you've got your little switch button which we're going to um, leave that for the time being. Don't forget your video cable guys. So you're going to need that one to get a picture on the screen. And don't forget to plug in your mouse and your keyboard. Last but not least, the network cable. Don't forget to plug that into the back of the rig very important. Okay guys so I've tried plugging everything in and we're at the moment now where we're going to turn the rig on. Um, I've just turned the monitor on, it's gone into standby, I'll turn that back on. Switch our power supply on at the side and let's hit the power button and see if she starts up. Okay, so it's good. We've got fans going which is a good sign. We've got CPU fan going which is also a good sign and we've got windows which is an even better sign. Okay guys, so so far so good. You can see the hard disk light flashing down the bottom here, so it's working away. The graphics card is working, and up the back there we've got our miner running. Just take you through a quick look through the motherboard. You can see that the CPU light is working there. Now what you probably want to try and do with this build, it's probably a three graphics card build, so you could probably fit another one on the end here, and another one on this side. And then, uh, and then uh, you would still have enough room for heat to get out and everything like that. If we look down on the motherboard, we've, we've got some PCIe slots. We've got two more spare PCIe slots for two extra graphics cards. So this is probably a uh, three GPU minor build. So if we take a look at the meter, we're only using 65, 63, 69, maybe 70 watts, you could say. Uh, for mining ETN, so that's a pretty good. That's a really good result, and uh, that's a really low uh, powered uh, mining rig. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it for the budget build. If this was helpful, please leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.